He put white powder on his face to mock Nazi ideology. This act of rebellion is really what made Trollmann a hero for me. She saved around 50 children from Nazi genocide. The story of Alfreda Markovska is one that's worthy of doing movies. Alfreda, Nonja, Markovska and Johann Rukili Trollmann resisted the Nazis, even though they were on their death list as Roma and Sinti. Director Simonida Selimovic leads a rehearsal with the Berlin theatre group Ronja Power. <laughs> the actors are all Roma, their mission to tell the stories of unseen Roma heroes. The synth These are our role models, people like Nonchia and Trollmann, and all those who are somehow not mentioned at all or only very little because they did things that shaped society. This is the trailer of the theater play Gypsy Stop Dancing, about the Sinto boxer Johann Trollmann. Simonida Selimovic and her sister Sandra were inspired by his bravery and how he stood up to the Nazis. I had read about Trollmann and was really fascinated by his story, the way he stepped out of this victim role and said, no matter what you do, you cannot take away my dignity. Trollmann was born in 1907 to a German Sinti family in Lower Saxony. He started boxing as a child in Hannover, showing talent at an early age. He soon became the North German amateur boxing champion. Berlin in the late 1920s. Here, Trollmann wants to become a professional boxer. The public soon grew to love him for many reasons. He was very handsome and he had, uh, you know, uh, big black curls, big black eyes. Um, and uh, from what we know is that during his fights, much of the audience were actually women. The women were always waiting at the entrances when he boxed. And my mother also had a crush on him. In the 1920s and 30s, boxing was massively popular. Trollmann quickly established a name for himself and developed a trademark style. A German boxing magazine described it like this. The boxers using the accepted style were driven crazy by a perfectly executed circus attraction. Trollmann made faces, talked to himself and the spectators, performed punches that are not in any textbook. Rare footage shows Trollmann's style. Lots of legwork, almost like a dance and very unusual for the time. Trollmann's boxing style uh, resembled a lot Muhammad Ali's uh, style later on, which was also very active and very kind of dynamic and rhythmic in the ring. But when the Nazis seized absolute power in January 1933, they had Trollmann in their sights. The Nazis considered that the Roma are inferior and a danger to the purity of German race. And uh, they repeated many of the stereotypes uh, that considered Roma as antisocial, as criminal, um, as dirty. The Nazis persecuted races that their ideology considered inferior. As a Sinto, Trollmann was a target. The Nazis began by ridiculing his boxing style. It was uh, really about trying to show the superiority of the Aryans over all the other non-white populations in Germany. And Trollmann didn't play that part because he was evidently better. He was somehow an icon, which is why uh, he was a danger for the Nazis. With the Nazis growing ever stronger, Trollmann's situation worsened. In 1933, he fought for the German light heavyweight title at the Bock Brewery in Berlin. The fight became a proxy power play with the Nazis on one side and Tollmann's fans on the other. 
The tense atmosphere was depicted in the international hit TV series Babylon Berlin. Trollmann was clearly winning, but the judges called a no decision. The audience was outraged. Even though the Boxing Association had long been under Nazi control, the referee was forced to give in to the crowd. Trollmann was proclaimed German champion. But not for long. Just a few days later, the Nazis stripped him of his title. The reason? Un-German boxing. Un-German is when the boxer cries with joy. Un-German is when he dodges the blows. His entire behavior was un-German. In his fight with the Nazis, Trollmann had no chance. But his resistance was unbroken. His anger led to a new form of protest. For his next fight, he showed up with powdered white skin and bleached blonde hair. A caricature of the Aryan. He knew he had nothing left to lose, and he wanted to show that he could fight like an Aryan. This time, Trollmann didn't dodge the blows. He offered no resistance, mocking his critics. So to have somebody of Roma origin do this kind of mockery of, uh, you know, the Aryan uh, policies and the Nazis' politics, really, uh, was really something very dangerous. Very brave. He held a mirror up to them. Fairgrounds, from now on, would be the only places where Trollmann could still fight. His career was over. In 1939, Trollmann was drafted into the German army, the Wehrmacht. As a young woman, Alfreda Noncia Markowska saved some 50 children from the Nazi genocide. Children from families like the ones in this archive footage, who were persecuted and deported. I'm moved by the way she reacted to the situation, especially as a Romney, who was herself a victim of this persecution, that she just helped these children. Markowska was born in 1926 to a traveling Polish Roma family that bred horses. Few pictures of her exist. Her life might have looked like that, shown in films made by non-Roma, often propagating stereotypes. But it is believed that Markowska's family had a good life back then. That changed when Nazi Germany invaded Poland in 1939, triggering World War II. And from the beginning, Roma were targeted. Immediately, there were um, created ghettos. There were the mobile units, death units, whose only objective was to eliminate unwanted uh, population. One day, the Nazis also came to the camp of Markovska's family. The entire camp, the entire tabor of, of, uh, of her family was assassinated in one of the forests. This was a mass killing. Um, that uh, counted with as many as 80 people, men, women and children, in that place. Markovska only survived because she was off getting food in nearby villages. She heard it from afar, but she couldn't get there. She was stopped. And she couldn't even bury her own family. She just saw that they were all lying there, dead. From that point on, Markovska would always resist the Nazis, even when she was deported to ghettos and forced labor camps. I was astonished by her courage to hear that in the ghettos she jumped over fences and she kept running away. Markovska married at some point. She and her husband Gucho worked as forced laborers on the railroad probably for the notorious organization TOT, a civil and military engineering company led by a senior Nazi. Deportations. Markovska and her husband saw these with their own eyes. The rail system they worked on was used to transport Jewish people and Sinti and Roma to concentration and death camps.
One day, a woman on a train to Auschwitz implored Markovska to take her four-year-old son. She agreed, despite the risk. This was just one of many children Markovska would rescue. She hid them in her clothing to get them off the trains. She didn't distinguish at all, and that was the nice thing. There were Polish children among them, lots of Roma children and Jewish children. She just did it. Simonida wants to honor Markovska's story with the Romnia Empower Theatre Group. In the play, they try to get the Marvel Film Company to make a superhero out of Markovska. Listen, um, we want to send you the draft about Nonchia, about our Roma hero, you know? Oh, you have an entwurf for a new Helden? This here is a Roma voice, because while stories have always been told about Roma, these stories are told, written and directed by Roma themselves, which is actually very rare. Markovska saved more than 50 children. She found relatives and foster families and even raised some of the children herself. When she was asked why she did it and also how she managed to really live with this level of stress, she said that she never thought that she's going to survive the war herself. So fear was not an issue. But how did the racism against Sinti and Roma begin? It is centuries old. Some linguists suggest that Roma and Sinti originally migrated from today's India and arrived in today's Europe around 1000 BC. The Indian language Sanskrit is the basis of the Roma language Romani. But why did Roma make the long trip to Europe? There is uh, not uh, too much agreement, um, but it seems it was not voluntary. It was uh, due to violence. Um, at the same time, migration was also a means of economic opportunities. In the beginning, Roma were treated reasonably well. Schutzbrief, royal warrants like these, allowed them passage, issued by King Sigismund, for example. These papers afforded a right to travel freely, to be given lodging and exemption from certain taxes. But the Black Plague, famine and war soon turned people against minorities. We have the imminent um, uh, danger of other people invading Europe. We have, you know, um, the, the Mongols, we have the, the Ottomans and of course Roma in this context look evidently different, not only by the skin color, but also they spoke a different language. So they were seen as uh, somehow a group that might pose danger. Stereotypes like those in this picture became commonplace. There are basically two forms of racism against Sinti and Roma, romantic stereotypes and degrading stereotypes. One is the negative one about you know, the gypsy witch, those that steal, that Roma are somehow, you know, un under-civilized or inferior. And the second uh, set of stereotypes is the romantic one. On one hand, associated with um, beautiful, sexy, promiscuous Roma women. Um, these are the images of Carmen, for example, or the images even of Esmeralda. Um, but quite honestly, they are very damaging. They also impose this idea that we as free-loving people, we don't observe the same norms and also we are here just temporarily. In Nazi Germany, racism against Sinti and Roma reached its peak. The Nuremberg Laws in 1935 defined Roma as a foreign race. Nurse and anthropologist Eva Justine taking blood samples. These photographs show her conducting experiments on Roma. She collected physical data with the aim of proving the superiority of the Aryan race. Basically having a scale in which you know, there is a right size of the nose, there is the right spectrum of colors of the eyes that is acceptable, or the shape of your skull is the uh, determinant of your IQ, or the level of your uh, civilization uh, capacities. 
the Nazis controlled, sanctioned and registered Roma and Sinti. They were sterilized, forced to stop working, to stay in one place and isolated in camps and ghettos. The Nazis finally deported them to death and concentration camps. In the concentration and death camp Auschwitz, there was a camp section only for Roma. The uh, family ties were so strong that when the Roma were separated and the families were pushed away, the people were completely unable to work. So they could not really take advantage of the Roma men who were supposed to you know, be put as forced labor in the camps. In March 1944, German troops occupied Hungary and a few weeks later began deporting Hungarian Jews to Auschwitz. To make room for them, the SS decided to empty the entire Roma camp section and murder all the inmates. But the prisoners, some of them former Wehrmacht soldiers, had armed themselves with sticks and shovels and were initially able to repel the SS. The camp command changed its strategy. Able-bodied inmates were transferred to other camps. Despite continued resistance, almost all of the more than 4,200 remaining Roma were murdered in the night of August the 2nd. All the families, uh, all Roma men, women, children of all ages were, were assassinated. Um, and those who were not, who were able to still be productive enough, were put in different camps so that they were continued to being exploited um, until their death. Trollmann was initially wounded while fighting in the German army on the Eastern Front. But in June 1942, he was arrested and deported to the Neuengamme concentration camp. Some say SS men recognized him there and forced him to fight. A survivor of the camp later testified that a guard beat Trollmann to death in 1944. His name appears in the concentration camp's death register. Against all odds, Alfreda Markowska survived the Nazi dictatorship and lived well into her 90s in post-war Poland. She never received compensation for her persecution. The Auschwitz Memorial commemorates the lives of Sinti and Roma. Between 200,000 and 500,000 were killed by the Nazis. Estimates vary because so little research has been conducted. And after the war, the injustice continued. After all the Roma had to suffer during the war, when the war ended, they came back to nothing. There was no recompensation. There was no moral recognition of their suffering and the discrimination continued. In 1956, the highest German court denied compensation to Sinti and Roma. The judges said Roma weren't persecuted for racial reasons, but due to what the court saw as their asocial, criminal and nomadic nature. They tend to criminality, especially to theft and fraud. They often lack the moral impulses of respect for other people's property because, like primitive man, they have an unrestrained drive to occupy. It's completely unacceptable at any given point in time after the war that the German courts have not ruled in favor of compensations of Roma Holocaust. The Nazis took their houses and businesses, so there was nothing left. Until well into the 1970s, some Sinti and Roma still had to live in old train carriages, buses, caravans and barracks outside the cities. Accommodation that had mold and no running water. <laughs> Nineteen eighty. A major protest finally attracts international attention. Survivors return to the Dachau concentration camp to fight for recognition of the horrors they experienced in Nazi Germany. Wir sind Repressalien äh, ausgesetzt von Behörden und von der Polizei und wir wurden nach 45 weiter 
offiziell bis 1970 rassistisch erfasst. Romani Rose was the spokesperson of the protesters. 12 Sinti went on a hunger strike in Dachau. The protest was a major turning point in the battle for recognition. And this is also something that generates a lot of media attention. And it was done exactly with that purpose, to create sufficient um, support and a critical mass of kind of political and social uh, pressure for the Germans to have to act and respond to, to these claims. Finally, in 1982, Chancellor Helmut Schmidt officially recognized on behalf of the Federal Republic of Germany the Nazi genocide against Sinti and Roma. But it was too late for survivors who had died in the intervening 37 years without receiving compensation. This late recognition meant that I didn't even hear about our history at school. So I didn't even know that Roma were affected by the Second World War at all. Simonida was born in Serbia and grew up in Austria. The late recognition left its mark. She experienced open racism time and time again. Really racist statements that I don't want to repeat. Do you even wash yourselves? Or the worst thing I was once asked, where's your caravan? Simonida and her sister Sandra founded the theatre group Romano Suato to fight these stereotypes. Ich wünsche mir, dass wir endlich hinter unserer eigenen Identität stehen. Ich wünsche mir, dass wir für uns selbst sprechen und unsere eigene Politik machen. She also wants to empower other young Sinti and Roma. It's important that they have the courage to stand up and speak for themselves, to go forward and fight for what is important to them. This is the memorial to the Sinti and Roma of Europe murdered under National Socialism in the center of Berlin. Also due to the late recognition, it took almost 70 years. Alfreda Markovska's bravery is also commemorated here. At the age of 80, Alfreda was the first Roma to receive Poland's highest order. In her hometown, several murals commemorate her. Here too, recognition came late. One of the children she saved campaigned on her behalf, Karol Parno Gerlinski, a famous Polish Sinti artist. Without Nonsha, he wouldn't have been alive. And that's why he said, this story must be told. It also took a long time to tell Trollmann's story. A boxing manager began a campaign to have his German championship title reinstated in 2003. His family eventually received a champion's belt, a symbolic gesture. Today there are Trollman books, films, commemorative stones and even a boxing training camp in Berlin. Actually there were many different ways um, in which Roma people and Roma communities resisted against the Nazis. Noncha, Alfreda Markowska in Poland and Rukeli, uh, Johann Trollmann here in Germany are two symbols, two icons that uh, represent this resistance as a way of life and as a strategy of survival. And this is something that has been built into our DNA for centuries. Polish Romney Mierga Kruczenicka wants to ensure as a deputy director of ARIAC that such stories live on. The organization ARIAC aims to empower Roma and combat racism with arts and culture. The Romnia Power Theatre Group also aims to preserve the memory of Romani resistance. They want to continue telling unseen hero stories in order to fight stereotypes and to take a stand against racism. People need to see this. We are part of history. Roma exist. We are here. The memorial commemorates all the lost lives. It's important for Sinti and Roma because many of them have no graves for their loved ones. They were gassed or killed in mass shootings. Here, a daughter remembers her father. But now the memorial is in danger. 
Germany's train company plans to cut down trees at the memorial to make way for a new underground railway line. Activists believe it might affect the memorial even further and would be a wrong signal at a time of rising racism. It's a very difficult uh, moment right now because also we see the rise of far right in Europe, we see the rise of far right in Germany and the fact that we can even consider somehow eliminating or affecting a place of Roma Holocaust memory is in itself a problem. Roma will continue to fight to ensure that all their stories, all their resistance and all the lost lives are remembered.